let's say you take 100K, okay, and you sell that out of your 401K, and then you have a net investable 55K. And then I proceeded to invest that in opportunities for the next 20 years. That 55K will grow to over 2 million, assuming a 20% annual interest rate, and that also has some uh, tax efficiency to it. Now, if I kept that 100K in my 401K, after 20 years, it's just over 250K. Plus, it's still subjected to taxes, fees, and inflation. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Real Estate Rundown. I want to introduce a guy that I've had the opportunity to talk with extensively. And I got to tell you, he is not just a wealth of real estate knowledge. This gentleman has got a wealth of knowledge in a lot of fields that we're going to kind of dive into because it's something that a lot of you know, I've been working through some of that in this last year as well. But I want to welcome Dave Wilcott to the show. He's the founder and CEO of Pantheon Investments. He's also a former Marine. I don't know, Dave, if, if you're a Marine, you're always a Marine, right? Always. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in addition to that, he was he was a captain in the Marine Corps. He's a serial entrepreneur. He's a father of four children. He's an Iron Man. The guy's got over three hundred or 3,500 doors in his portfolio, and as well as a lot of alternative investments. On top of that, Dave has written a book, Holistic Wealth Strategies. So Dave, welcome to the show, man. I look forward to our conversation. Hey, Shannon, really grateful to be here, connect with you and your audience. You know, Dave, we have we were talking before the show and I had to hurry up and push record because we were getting into all kinds of great stuff. But, you know, tell us a little bit about, I mean, I gave some highlights, but tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got from the Marine Corps to real estate to, you know, what your path is now. You bet, Shannon. So for me, I was raised in a middle-class family in Connecticut. And I was told the recipe for success was to go to school, get good grades, you're going to get a job and everything would just work out, right? So I kind of followed down that path. I got into school at uh, George Washington University in DC, did the ROTC program, and then from there transitioned into the Marine Corps and gained some amazing perspective there, uh, such as getting shot at, traveling the world, and also you know, and also, frankly, Shannon, you know, learning some things that they don't teach you anywhere else in the world, right? Things such as leadership, uh, teamwork, and integrity, right? That were so important. Uh, after the Marine Corps, I transitioned into corporate America, got into the tech industry, and I quickly kind of became frustrated, right? Because I lost that se sense of mission that I had in the Marine Corps that was just really driving me. And just, I really lost that in corporate America. And about the same time, my wife and I were starting to build a family. We had an 18 month old running around, driving us crazy, trying to figure that out. And then on October 24th, 2000, uh, we literally welcomed triplets into the world and quadrupled the size of our family. And I got to tell you, Shannon, I mean, you know, what was going through my head after drinking a bit that night was, you know, this is stuff you see in the news, right? I mean, this is, you know, this is TV worthy and it's happening to me. But all I could think about was financial security for my family. And now the goalposts just got moved way further down the field. So how am I going to figure this out, right? So I sat down with my financial planner and he told me the same thing that every other planner told me was, oh, just max out your 401k and they have these things called 529 plans that are, you know, tax efficient, right? And, you know, you can pack money away for the kids and, you know, you're going to do fine, right? And you'll average 7% return. And it was right then, Shannon, that I realized that, you know, the, you know, true wealthy are not making money as a retail investors in the stock market. So it pushed me down, you know, this obsessive journey to figure out how the top 1% were really building their wealth. And keep in mind, this is back in 2000 when there weren't tons of resources and great podcasts like this out there. So I started networking, looking under rocks, reading every book I could. I started investing in real estate, everything from you know single family to retail, to raw land, to oil and gas. I mean, you name it, all kinds of different types of investments. And then, you know, fast forward 20 years later, and I've really just taken all of those experiences as an LP and going through that journey myself 
and then trying to build a system for other people on how they could create not only freedom of money in their life, but freedom of purpose, freedom of time, and freedom of relationships, right? Because that's what it's really all about. Yeah, you know, I was asked that question the other day, you know, what is what is the reason you do what you do? And, you know, Dave, time is one thing we can't buy. You know, we watch movie stars and celebrities, you know, all the money they could ever want, and they still can't buy an extra day to their life, right? And yet we we have been sold as Americans that, you know, work for 40 years and then retire and, you know, everything's going to be fine. And yet we don't really... Most people don't do what you did, what I've done, and that's really get into the weeds like my listeners do, like your listeners do, about there's got to be more than this, right? They've talked to the financial planner. The, the planner says this. They buy it. They just take it and they go, well, that's what life is about. And it's awesome to see people like yourself that are taking that and going, you know what? I actually can create my own destiny. I can do what I want here. I can make these things be what I want. But then the the next step that most people fall short on is the education process that you then went through over the next 20 years to get that. You know, it, it sounds like your journey was very similar to mine in that you know, there's a piece of it over here. There's a piece of it over here. There's a piece here. You know, not all of it's in one place, especially because of podcasts, because of webinars, because of all the things that are available now that make it so that you could actually get your hands on all of this information and get it from people that understand how the pieces fit together. You know, when you've been doing this, you know, you obviously through your journey have created the financial picture that you want. You've created the time freedom that you want. We talked about that last time we got together, that you've been able to accumulate a lot of time freedom in your life. And it sounds like, especially with the book you've published, that you are now looking at some additional things that come into your life when you have secured your primary need, which is food, clothing, shelter. Uh, You've got your basics taken care of. Most people turn their look at Where's my health? What's my longevity? What's what's my output going to be? You know, tell us a little bit more about the book and how that came kind of to fruition in everything else you've got going. Yeah, sure, Shannon. So really, I wanted to create the book as and create really a systematic way for think people to think about their wealth. And I want people to change the way they think about wealth because the way we think about it right now, like you said, you know, it's around financial security, it's what's the ROI, you know, on this asset versus the other thing. But really, if you don't have a target, you're going to miss every time. So it all starts Shannon with creating a crystal clear vision statement for yourself. And if you're a business owner out there, it's the first thing you do, right? With a business as an entrepreneur, you're creating your vision statement. But oftentimes we don't do this with our spouse, with our families and having that crystal clear clarity on, you know, what do you want your life to look like, right? So that's really the underpinning to the strategy. Once you have that, you can move into the first phase, which is really all about you. And it's all about mindset right? Do you have limiting beliefs from your childhood, right? You know, maybe your peers or maybe, you know, your parents or your colleagues that, you know, uh, brought to you. Because as we know, right, as Jim Rohn says, you're a product of the five people that you spend most of your time with. So who are those people that you're, you know, surrounding yourself with? What goals and habits are you creating to support your vision? Or are you creating habits that are actually taking further away from your vision, right? And think about mindset for a second, right? Even we were talking about earlier with the financial planning. I mean, I started asking questions, right? I mean, does it really make sense to defer taxes, right? Because that's what these experts supposedly are telling you to defer taxes. But I'm sure your educated audience understands that, hey, we, you know, we'd rather pay taxes on the seed and rather than the harvest. And we can do that in a more efficient way by putting that into assets such as real estate or oil and gas, things like that, right? So, you know, but that requires that mindset. That requires you to not follow the herd. And it starts, you know, requiring you to start to ask questions and then thinking about yourself as the greatest asset. So how can you actually invest in yourself through education, through relationships? Right. 
Yeah. You know, and we see this all the time, you know, and we touched on it a little bit that, you know, as people begin to get their nose off the grindstone, right? I mean, look, when you're 22, 24, 26, 28, you get up, you go to work, you grind, you you keep looking at the clock, literally the calendar going, hey, man, I got to do this for another 30 years, 40 years. And we're so focused on making money and making a name and making a career for ourselves that we often lose sight of us. We lose sight of the real reason that we're alive is not to go punch a clock for somebody else. It's to have a life we want. But a lot of people lose that at the very first step, like you said, with the mindset. They aren't challenging the status quo, right? I mean, we see that all the time with what people believe comes out of the news or what people, you know, are doing. Everybody's doing this, right? Everybody, the majority of America thinks that the safest place to be is in a W-2 job working for a large company. We just saw Google the other day laid off 1,700 people just like that. And they just announced with that layoff that there will be more coming. But that's supposed to be the safest place on the planet and nobody's challenged that, right? And that that is really where that journey has to start because you can't take control of your situations. You can't challenge the status quo. You can't get farther than the path that somebody else has for you unless you have the mentality and the mindset that there's something of value in you, that there's some something that is extraordinary about you. And it's so, I don't want to say funny and I don't want to say frustrating, so we'll make it up something in between. But it's so interesting to me to see where people don't realize that just challenging the status quo makes you extraordinary. Yeah, I think, Shannon, I mean, you know, let's face it, the industrial age is over, right? So you need to really change that paradigm uh, of being in a time and effort economy where you're trading your time for money, right? And move into a performance-based economy where if you can create value in the world, then you're going to get compensated. So it's not about the hours on the clock, right? And if you can really make that paradigm shift, uh, it's massive, you know, what will happen. And one of the things also that I really, you know, love in this space, one of the things we're actually doing, so we have a mastermind and a virtual family office. And at our annual event next month, everyone is going to be presenting a one of their 10x opportunities that they've experienced in their lives. And, you know, that could be an investment opportunity, but a lot of it is actually around financial engineering, right? Because the more resourceful you are, you can actually create money without capital, right? And, you know, you can do all of these things, right? So, so that's what's really foundational around the mindset is in having that mindset shift and thinking in that way. Well, and I, I see that a lot with you know, with millennials, right? Both good and bad, right? I, I ran into a kid this last summer that he was making $20,000 a month in on uh, Instagram and TikTok doing backflips, right? I don't think when his parents put him into gymnastics, they were thinking that he was going to have his own individual circus, but he has thought about that performance base. People were wanting to watch him do tricks and backflips. And yet you and I were programmed that you know, I, I've got another guy that uh, does some social media stuff for me, a uh, 28 year old kid drives a Lamborghini. And I and he knows that every single month, the internet's going to throw him more money based on all the things he's previously done and the following that he has and all this other stuff. And yet you and I are sitting here still struggling or you're in my generation are sitting here still struggling with that performance base that I've got to go punch a clock. I've got to be in the office. I've got to do certain things. I've got to pull this lever and this lever to get my treats. And in a lot of ways, the younger generation has embraced that, but they've also, they have very few people that grab onto that mindset part of it that says, I can and I will. And I think that's where a lot of that kind of gets lost. And then you've got, you know, I don't want to call us old yet, Dave, we're not there. Come on. But we are in that generation that is still, you know, one set removed from our fathers that our fathers absolutely didn't understand that you could make money without working 12 hours. A day. Yeah, yeah, 100 percent. And that's a perfect segue, Shannon, into phase two of the holistic wealth strategy, which is really all about education. And I have this formula that I've developed to help the audience kind of just think through this a little more holistically. 
which is that your net worth is equal to your financial IQ plus your mindset IQ plus your physical capital plus your relationship capital. Okay. So let me unpack that a little bit, right? It's, you know, financial IQ is so important, right? I mean, you know, all of the, you know, tax strategies that you've uncovered, right, as a savvy real estate investor and that you're bringing to your investor, that came from you getting educated and learning and probably being in mastermind groups and reading and doing and taking action, right? But a lot of the average investors, don't even know these tax strategies in, exist, for ex instance, right? So getting smarter on, you know, alternative opportunities, being resourceful can really level up your game, you know, from that education standpoint. We talked about mindset, how critical that component is. And think about it, right? What's the difference between someone like Elon Musk and someone you went to high school with who's in the same circle of friends, the same job, and the same town, right? Right. It's a lot of, it's all mindset, right? And then, yeah. Hey guys, real quick. If you're enjoying this show, I want to ask you to please give us a five-star rating and review on whatever platform you're listening to right now. Leaving us a rating and review takes just a few seconds and it's a great way to show your support for our show. Your support helps us reach more listeners and create better content. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Now let's get back to the show. You know, that's an important thing because a lot of people don't, think about that. You know, I had a conversation last night with a guy and, you know, he's my landscape architect and he brought another guy with him. And we, we just sat down and we talked about some of these strategies and he's like, man, how do you know so much? And I go, I don't even know what a hibiscus is, right? You know what you know, but you know what you know to generate your money. And I know what I know to generate my money, but it's the network between the two that says, Hey, I don't need to know anything about a hibiscus but I know what I know. And now he's able to participate in that. And it's, and, and it is exactly that it's your relationship IQ. And I've never heard it said the way you just said it. And I really like that. It's your relationship IQ plus the IQ of everybody in that relationship, right? Because I don't need to be the best plumber in the world. I know a plumber, right? I don't need to be, I don't cut my own hair but I know somebody that does very well with that, right? And that is where we often forget and I know in my early 20s and, and 30s, I didn't really care about my network, right? I was too busy hustling. I was too busy working to really think about glad handing it with everybody and, and doing that stuff. But I really like what you say because, and I often wonder if, if that it shouldn't be multiplied by your relationship IQ, right? Because when you do that, Dave, you now have access to everybody that I have access to because of our relationship. Right. We were talking before the show. We've got three connections to put together on an email about something I didn't know you did and people you didn't know I knew. Right. And so it's that relationship plus these other things that you bring to the table that really is what springboards you. And, you know, I know you uh, and I'm the same way. If I go to a mastermind and I get some really solid information that's going to be, you know, another level up on the ladder for me. I'm going to share it with everybody in my network, right? I'm going to be I'm going to be using that and and demonstrating that and and bringing that to my network. And how many other people that are in my network that should I be plugging into that have that same ability to do that for me? Yeah, hundred percent, Shannon. Just think, you know, for the audience out there, right? It's like you could literally be one relationship away from your next million dollar idea or investment or something. Right. So really focusing on that, you know, those relationships is really key. Right. And having a community around you to support you. And then lastly, like, you know, physical capital around health is just so important. I mean, just think about, you know, Steve Jobs for a minute. Right. I mean, he had a significant amount of wealth. Right. And probably had all the dreams in the world. But at the time, he only had one dream. Right. And that was to solve his health challenges. Right. So I think we can't, we cannot ever forget about investing in ourselves and our health because if you can really have 10x the energy, the vitality, the longevity, right? And bring that to your game, bring that to the relationships, your family, your friends, your teammates, right? Think about what that could do for you. Well, and you know, you're absolutely right. I mean, if you went, I think the, Steve Jobs was 56. So if you could put somebody in Steve Jobs's shoes at 55 and a half years old, would they take it? 
He had all the relationship capital in the world, one of the most recognized men on the planet. And he had, I mean, he didn't want for money, that's for sure. Maybe, you know, spruce up his wardrobe a little bit, you know, always the black. But, you know, the reality is, would you take his life, take his lifestyle and have everything he had knowing you had six months left to live, right? I think very few people would look at that. So now you really put that physical capital into perspective as to what it's really worth, right? And, you know, I know that over the last year, you know, I hit a milestone in August, I turned 50, right? And it was a milestone, not a speed bump, you know, it wasn't a hill to climb. But I realized that, you know, I, I started last year at 240 pounds. That's a bit heavy for a guy that's 5'9", right? Uh, and for those of you that think I'm taller because I'm sitting down all the time in the podcast, I'll let you keep thinking that. But, you know, throughout the year, I really saw how my physical capital was being hindered because of decisions I was making, right? I quit drinking about six, just over six years ago. So that wasn't my problem, but I wasn't taking care of my health. And I started going to the gym and I really started, I got, I got with a doctor that really got me dialed in on my supplements and my vitamins and not a lot of big pharma stuff, working out, you know, doing the saunas and the cold plunges. And I weighed in just after the first of the year at 200 pounds, right? And I've noticed that in my life. I've noticed my energy levels gone up. I've noticed my stress level has gone down. And it's amazing to me, Dave, how much I can handle with a lower stress level that doesn't raise my stress level because I'm doing these other things that are putting my body and my mind in the right place that allow me to maximize on that physical capital, right? It's amazing how much a finely tuned machine can get done in eight hours that a out of shape fat kid can't get done in 10 hours, you know, too stressed out to think about it and, and trying all these things and everything. So I can definitely relate to that as far as where my life has, where my track has taken me over the last 14 months or 10 months, really, if I really get honest about when I started trying to get on this journey, but I wasn't on the journey just to lose the weight. I was on the journey to change the lifestyle. Right. I was on the journey to get to a place where I could maintain a very healthy weight and, you know, be able to look like and be able to replicate that, not crash dieting and doing these other things. And so it's been definitely something that I I can 100 percent relate to as far as my energy levels and and what I have to put back in the game. And it's funny because you see guys like Jeff Bezos. Right. Everybody's noticed the physical change in Jeff over the last couple of years. Right. Guy went from looking like, yeah, the guy that came up with the idea for Amazon to looking, looking like, you know, Amazon hired a professional model. But it's funny, that's always usually the last component, right? Yeah, you know why? Exactly, Shannon. It's really sad, right? Because most people actually, they trade their time. They're going after wealth so hard at the expense of their health. I mean, look, look at all these top executives, entertainers and they totally burn out. So they might have achieved, you know, wealth, but they did that, you know, at the expense of their health. Yeah. And it's funny because that's the one thing you can't get back, right? I mean, if you think about it, if you, and, and I like math, right? You do too. We're in that game. If you look at your ability to make $100,000 a year uh, and it takes away from the length of your life because of how you're going about doing it, or you look at making $75,000 a year, having more free time, having more enjoyable moments, having more pictures on your phone from experiences you had, and yet allows you to live another 15 years? Which one is really the mathematical equation of what you're going to have in your life? One thing, the experiences and the people and all of that, you can't buy. You cannot put a price on that. But the other side is, I actually think you probably could if you prioritized your health first. Right. If you really put that as a number one goal above money making, but so often we don't because why? Yeah, for sure. Well, let's jump into phase three, Shannon, and we can talk about this in the sense of really it's all about creating infrastructure and really creating a dream team to support you on your journey. And again, a lot of us are, are constantly thinking about wealth in terms of you know, what's the ROI on this investment or that investment, right? And trying to build my net worth. But we don't think about it from the perspective of, hey, what are the top three wealth destroyers that are actually pulling me back, right? Number one, 
taxes, whether you're a business owner, W-2, anything, right? Your number one biggest expense are taxes. So do you actually have a proactive tax strategy? And I can't tell you, I mean, I spent, you know, I built several businesses along the years. I fired over five different CPA firms. I spent more and more money with prestigious firms and everyone always, you know, did tax preparation by looking in the rear view mirror and just saying, hey, this is what you owe, right? We never did anything proactive until I finally, you know, kept searching and found the right firm that we have a proactive tax strategy, right? That's supporting my vision and what we're trying to do. And I think about taxes every day, you know, which is why, you know, last year I spent four, you know, four percent in taxes, right? So Having a proactive tax strategy is absolutely key. We also think a really important imperative thing is, you know, it's not only about multiplying your wealth, but protecting your wealth. So we like the infinite banking strategy and we help our clients set this up as well, where it's basically a cash value, whole life insurance policy. And especially right now, right? There's all this uncertainty in the market. We've even having banks, you know, fail and things like that. But what I do is I take all the multiple streams of income from my different assets and I put it right into the life insurance policy. It grows completely tax-free. You can give it to your heirs tax-free. It's got asset protection. And what's really cool is you can actually borrow against the cash value to invest in that next opportunity and create some arbitrage there. You know, or you have that as your sleep at night, you know, your security fund, right? So you can have a year or two capital and then stop stressing about all the things that are happening in the world, right? So, and this is a, this is very foundational to what family offices and ultra high net worth use is life insurance. So a key part uh, of the planning that people should have. And then, you know, lastly, we don't want to forget about asset protection as well, because we want to be creating whatever your net worth and your wealth is, you know, you want to put in proactive measures to protect that. Yeah. And, you know, this is also coming back to that longevity piece, right? If somebody's too busy grinding, they don't have time to explore, right? They don't have time to get outside of that and look from 30,000 feet and go, where is this road even taking, right? Where is it taking my health? Where is it taking my future? Where is it taking all of the things that I need? Where is this going? And when you can do that and you can get above it, you can see where what you're doing isn't in your best interest, right? It isn't protecting your family. I mean, people look at that, especially in their 30s, right? Why do I need life insurance? I got another 60 years to live. Well, what if I showed you a way to use that life insurance to ensure that the 60 years you have left to live are absolutely top notch, right? They're providing you with the things that you're looking for. And so often we focus on the immediate need instead of any kind of a planning. I do want to take a minute though, Dave, and come to the defense of accountants. And I've learned this, right? Everybody hires an accountant thinking they are a tax planner. They are a tax strategist and they're not, right? You and I know this from experience because we kept trying to make, you know, something out of, out of something. But the reality is if you, as one of our listeners, do not have a tax strategist, you are asking something of your accountant that they do not do, they do not practice, they do not know about. And if you're continuing to ask your accountant the thing that everybody's going to start asking their accountant here in about a month, how can I save money? Why didn't you tell me about that? You're asking the wrong person, and the definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and expecting different results. So you've really got to hone in on what Dave and I have talked about repeatedly is you've got to get a strategist. And a lot of people think this, that I got to get a strategist when I start making real money. And Dave, I think you're going to agree with me on this. That's absolutely not true because you're going to start making real money sooner when you can eliminate that tax game, have another 30 or 40% of your spendable income or your earned income to become investment income. Uh, Warren Buffett says compounding interest is the eighth wonder of the world, right? He knows a few things about that. And if you're cutting yourself off in your 20s and your 30s from 25 to 50% of your uh, earned income toward your future, 
that snowball is going to have a lot less mass to it by the time you get into your 30s and 40s and start making the real money. And so it's never too early and it's never too proactive to be talking to tax strategists. You know, I tell my kids this all the time. You are never going to live cheaper than you do today, right? So why not start implementing the savings plans and the investment plans and those things? Investing 10% or 5% of a $50,000 salary is no different exercise than investing 5 or 10% of a $500,000 annual salary, right? It still takes dedication because I know a ton of doctors and lawyers who are making half a million plus that are technically broke right? Everything they do goes somewhere for a payment or a project or something, and they don't have access to spendable cash because the habits that came from the steps one, two, and three were never implemented. Yeah. Let me give you, Shannon, let me give you a great example of this. I mean, this is just so great to see, right? So we practice this in our household, right? So my oldest daughter is 25 right now. She went to college We set up a policy for her, which she was doing some work, started contributing to the policy. It's only $10,000 a year. If she only puts in $10,000 a year, by the time she's 65, she'll have amassed almost basically 100K in an income stream, right? But she took that capital. She graduated college, her and her boyfriend took some of the initial 10, 15,000, purchased a house, and then they moved into the house and they house hacked it in one year, built up 100K in sweat equity, paid off the insurance policy that, that they used. They went and bought their next house and now they're renting it out for 1,500 bucks a month. That's cash flow, right? And now the policy the cash value of the policy was never interrupted, right? So that money continues to compound and they've created another asset and an income stream, right? So when you kind of think about it, right, the multiplier effect, and this is one of the things that I've learned about how the ultra wealthy, you know, play this three-dimensional chess game so well is where can we find multiplier type opportunities, where you're looking at, you've got tax efficiency, you've got a collateral option, you've got asset protection, right? You've got, you know, this tax efficiency, right? All, all of these things in one vehicle, right? It's powerful. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's the stacking effect, right? You've got that, you've got tax efficiency on other things you're doing with, you know, how you're putting your money to work and you're creating habits that allow you over time that as you get into the higher income tax bracket and higher wage brackets, you're able to take more advantage of that. You know, it's one thing to see the returns, not that a 10% return is any different on any amount of money, but it's a lot easier to see that on a half a million dollars. But most people never get to the place where they all of a sudden find themselves staring down a pile of money that size. They have to get there $10,000 at a time, which is actually $833 a month, right? They get there that way. And I think that a lot of people fail to really recognize the fact, you know, that that doesn't just materialize. So what else have you got in your book? This has been a great conversation, by the way, Dave, and and I really appreciate the insight. But what else have you got in there as we wrap this up? Yeah, for sure. So phase four is really about asset repositioning. Right. Because oftentimes people might say, hey, Dave, you know, this makes sense. I've been getting smarter, kind of learning on the first three phases, but I don't have 50K lying around, right, to go invest in that next opportunity. But yet over 90% of Americans essentially have their capital in two different places. It's either in trapped equity in their primary residence or it's in held hostage in government sponsored qualified plans like 401ks and IRAs. So on the 401k side, you know, we actually created a 401k exit calculator that we'd be happy to give to investors. And essentially we built this model that if you take a hundred, let's say you take a hundred K, okay. And you sell that out of your 401k, you pay a 10% penalty, you pay 35% taxes, and then you have a net investable 55k. 
And then I proceeded to invest that in opportunities such as, you know, you guys have Shannon, right, for the next 20 years. That 55K will grow to over 2 million, right? assuming a 20% annual interest rate, and that also has some tax efficiency to it. Now, if I kept that 100K in my 401K, after 20 years, it's just over 250K. Plus, it's still subjected to taxes, fees, and inflation. So I encourage people to do the math, right? And take a look at where they are on their journey, because you may have, you know, there's different options we've talked about. You could go into a self-directed IRA, but depending on where you are, you know, it might even make sense to your point earlier, get control of your capital, reposition it into something that's more safe and efficient, you know, find out when your break even point is, and then you're going to grow. And then the same thing with the house, right? We were all taught that paying off your mortgage is the American dream, and we want to do that. But if I can borrow even at today's interest rate, six, six and a half percent, and then I can be in another real estate deal making a 20% average annual return that's more tax efficient, plus I just added more mortgage interest, you know, if I did like a HELOC or something, right? And I've got additional savings. Right. You got somebody else paying your bills in the rental. That's the thing I love about all of that is you've started the original strategy, but somebody else is now, you're responsible, but somebody else is actually going to fork over the money to pay that. Exactly. So it's all about getting more efficient. A lot of people have low hanging fruit in terms of repositioning, you know, their portfolio today into more of an optimized portfolio. Yeah. Well, Dave, that has been uh, a ton of information and I can't wait to get my hands on the book, but where can people find this book and find you? Yeah. So if people would like a free copy of the book, you can just go to holisticwealthstrategy.com and we've got a free download for that. Great. So that'll be in the show notes. And is that where they can find you, Dave? Where can they get uh, more information about you and what you're doing to help people strategize and become tax efficient? Yeah, that's really the best place. And, you know, we have a whole education series that helps people with different assets, things like that. You could also check us out on our podcast, Wealth Strategy Secrets of the Ultra Wealthy is another place uh, you can check as well. I know there's one great episode on there that we did together. So definitely go check that out. And guys, I want to thank you for coming uh, back to us and listening again to Dave Wilcott and all the information he's got for us. Dave, I want to thank you for being a guest here on the Real Estate Rundown. Guys, if you if you found value here, like, subscribe, uh, you'll get more information and you can find us at shannonrobnet.com. And we look forward to seeing you next time here on the Real Estate Rundown. Thanks for listening. I hope you found tons of value in this show. It would help us a lot if you could rate and leave us a five-star review as we continue our mission to help others just like you in their real estate journey. Thank you. And we'll catch you on the next episode of Robnet's Real Estate Rundown.